hello 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 good morning good afternoon good evening depending on your time zone welcome to my youtube channel my name is obanje joseph please hit the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel share and like this page as well today we are going to be talking about actors in the international system actors in the international system now who is an actor in the international system an actor is an entity or a group or bodies that are capable of influencing the international system now these entities can be state or non-state actors so broadly speaking there are two major actors within the international system we have got the state actors and the non-state actors okay so the concept of the state and non-state actors is derived from the international system which sees international relations as a collaborative action between state actors on one hand and other bodies other bodies like economic bodies social groups you know such as you know banks industrial companies students environmentalists you know women organizations and so on so international organization or international system is the is a conglomeration of both state and non-state actors working together to hold the international system very firmly okay so now we are going to categorize the state actors and the non-state actors now who are state actors so theoretically the state is the basic actor in the international relations now all forms of interactions even those that are not carried out by the state revolve around the state okay now those okay they are the catalyst for international relations and can and can be defined as a legitimate organization or legitimate organized political entity controlled by government including the various arms and levels with human inhabitants and whose independence is recognized by other states okay so states differ in size okay but they are similar they have similar characteristics so for a political entity to be regarded as a state there are certain features that such an entity must actually possess what are those features number one is sovereignty so they must have a level of independence okay as in they must have independence they must have the power to make laws and you know ensure that that law is enforced without any external interference okay so number two is territory territory talks about the geographical geographical location of the state okay and when we're talking about the geographical location we are talking about the topography as well as the hydrology of the state the topography is actually the land mass okay is talking about how hilly or how slopey is you know is the territory and then we have the hydrology which is the water bodies okay so that's number two number one is sovereignty number two is territory number three is population population is actually the inhabitants the number of people in fact the human beings that inhabit that particular entity the issue is that irrespective of the number of people that inhabit the entity it doesn't really matter you can have like 1.3 billion in china you can have like 800 million in in india almost 1 billion in india you can have like you know 400 million more than 400 million in the u.s you can have almost 200 million and then you can have like 13 million in some countries so irrespective of the number of population it doesn't really matter what matters is that there should be human beings inhabiting that territory and then number four is government okay government is actually an institution that ensures that the wills of the states you know are carried out okay so we so that is actually government we have you know we have levels okay as well as organs of government don't forget you know in nigeria we have three levels federal state and local local government and then we have organs of government that is 
executive, judiciary, and legislature. Okay, then we also have the armed forces. It's another feature of a state. Then we have recognition by other states or recognition by the United States, uh, by the UN. Okay, so a state is an actor because the foreign policies of the state goes beyond its boundary to other states and they are considered the general will of the state. So the foreign policy of a state is considered the general will of the state. Okay, so, so when we are talking about the state, okay, like the realist will put it, the state is unitary, the state is rational, the state is actually, you know, the state is unitary, is rational, and then, you know, the state is an entity on its own, okay, and it is it's the supreme body within this entity, you know, within the entity that, uh, within the entity of, uh, of human association, okay, so that is actually the state. So examples of states are Nigeria, Ghana, the United States of America, Gambia, United Kingdom, you know, Russia, and all of that. All of these are states. Now, let us go to non-state actors. Now, the concept of non-state actors depicts all other actors in the international system other than the state actors, who are constant factors that cannot be neglected in the international system. You know, they have they have effectively involved, they have been effectively involved in the international affairs, policy and lawmaking processes, thereby limiting the complete sovereignty of the state. Okay, now the non-state actors can be classified broadly into two. Okay, we have the regional non-state actors and then we have the universal non-state actors but before we go into that classification and I'd like you to know that the non-state actors can be intergovernmental non-state actors and non-governmental non-state actors the intergovernmental non-state actors you know are you know both regional bodies and universal bodies what are regional bodies Regional bodies are organs that are formed by three or more states for the pursuance of set goals, interests, and objectives. Now, these states share certain similar features, which are, you know, which are common interests, okay, which are common interests, historical similarity, language, and all of that. Now, these organizations are therefore set up to checkmate the excesses of other states as well as member countries to ensure peace security and stability in member states and to provide platforms for economic growth in the respective states now the regional bodies in you know uh, examples of regional bodies are au eu you know you know sadc and stuff like that so that is actually um regional bodies under under the intergovernmental intergovernmental non-state um okay intergovernmental non-state actors then we have the universal organizations under the intergovernmental non-state actors what are universal organizations now this is a type of organization that accommodates members from all over the world and with the sole purpose of ensuring mutual satisfaction for the needs of members across a broad spectrum of interest. Now, these organizations have members across all the regions. <coughs> examples are no examples are the United Nations Organization, you know, the World Health Organization, and all of that. Now, the the universal organization can be multi-purpose okay multi-purpose example is un or single purpose example is imf and world health organization okay so that is actually for international governmental non-state actors now let us look at international 
non-governmental non-state actors. International non-governmental non-state actors can be further subdivided into two. We have the legitimate organizations and the illegitimate organizations. What are legitimate organizations? Now, the legitimate organizations are non-state actors that are into that are into activities that are not considered inimical to the interest of the international system. Examples are number one, the multinational corporations. What are multinational corporations? These are companies that produce and distribute goods and services in more than one country. Okay, in more than one country. Now, multinational corporations, okay, they have it, you know, they have their facilities and other assets in at least one country other than its home country. Okay, now such companies have offices and or facilities or factories in different countries and are usually are usually have a centralized head office where they coordinate global management okay there are four main types of multinational corporations now we have the extractive multinational corporations the agricultural multinational corporations the service multinational corporations and the industrial multinational corporations that is actually for multinational corporations number two under the legitimate non-governmental non-state actors are number two is the red cross society what is the red cross society now it is a legitimate organization and it was founded in 1863 in geneva with about 97 million people as volunteer members and staff now, its main focus, its main focus, what is the main focus of the Red Cross, uh, Red Cross Society? Its main focus, okay, is to provide humanitarian and, you know, humanitarian and aid and support for those in need, then protect human life and health, and then ensure the respect for human rights and healthcare and healthcare for the victims and help care for the victims of man-made and natural disasters okay so that is actually number two under the legitimate number three is the catholic church the roman catholic church has been has been categorized as the oldest non-governmental non you know non non-governmental you know non-state actor in the world now with a population of 1.81 billion in 2009 according to statistics now don't forget that governmental okay governmental organization in the world okay sorry now the focus of the catholic church what is the focus of the catholic church the focus of the catholic church is to effectively propagate the gospel the church has has learned the the tactics of peaceful coexistence with other faiths and governments now the church has evolved both religious and political institutions and its and its influence on promoting you know peace can hardly be questioned so that is actually you know that is um, those are the legitimate non-governmental non-state actors we also have the papacy as well that is the pope okay we also have you know envoys okay we have you know um the we have envoys and all of that so these are international non-governmental non-state actors then we have the illegitimate actors illegitimate you know ng international non-governmental non-state actors what are the illegitimate we have terrorist organizations like Boko Haram, ISIS, and Saru, we have, you know, a, a, a lot of them. Then we also have international, um, international, okay, we, we also have other groups, okay, such as international, um, uh, we have other groups, okay which are the other groups that we have okay 
we have international drug okay drug cartel international drug cartel okay and some other syndicate groups okay that make up the illegitimate groups okay so those are the things that we may need to know so conclusively it is clear that even though all parties are separate entities all contributions all contributing in one way or the, they are all contributing in one way or the other to the development of states and consequently you know you know and consequently in the distribution of wealth and services okay now don't forget the non-state actors especially you know especially the non-governmental non-state actors actually contribute a great deal to the international system so it is not just the state actors that contribute to the international system but the state and the non-state actors all contribute to the international system to make it worthwhile okay thank you very much